I've been making YouTube videos for quite a few years now. And some of you might have noticed that I've had a few problems. It's not just picture quality and the sort of audio quality that you can hear now. It's also the speed at which I can make videos. I can't make them quick enough. I've been getting way behind on videos I've promised people. And it's not getting any easier. I'm not expecting sympathy. But we've just passed 30,000 subscribers. Thank you very much for that. I do appreciate it. But it also adds a bit of pressure on because now I'm thinking I really should start taking this YouTube stuff a bit more seriously. It's the least I can do. The good news is the Fund Prevention Officer has granted me permission to build a more permanent rig in this space. And hopefully that will make things easier, quicker to produce videos, and with a bit of luck, better quality as well. I thought it might be useful if I share that whole process with you. So as I look at the space I've got to deal with, I do realise I'm very lucky in that it's a decent sized room. The height of the room is fantastic, but it can also cause a major issue with the sound, as you can probably hear. I'll come on to that. We've also got a lovely view, which is often too bright. So that's already covered with Scrim 275 to get the light levels down. I'd really like to build some sort of lighting rig so I don't have loads of stands taking up the floor space. And ideally, it'd be good if I could get two different looks out of this space when I need to change the style around a bit. Something that's quick and easy to turn on whenever I have an idea for a video. Now I'm sorry if the audio quality on this video has been annoying you. And that's mainly caused by the high ceiling I was talking about earlier. That and the hard floor. So this is the first issue that I need to address, the acoustic quality. If you do a search on YouTube for acoustic panels, you'll see there's quite a few videos showing you how to make these easily. They're normally made of either foam or heavy insulation material like mineral wool or glass fibre. People keep telling me the mineral wool versions work best, especially if you leave a gap at the back. They all follow much the same pattern with a very simple wooden frame. Fill it with your heavy block of insulation material and stretch some speaker cloth over the front, staple it on. So obviously I didn't do that, mainly because I couldn't be bothered. I did, however, find these, which are being sold by a UK company on eBay. They're great value and probably built better than I would have done myself. I'll put a link to them in the description box below. Um, be interested to see how they perform. So let's get them fitted. Just as a reference, this is what the empty room sounds like before we've done any of the acoustic panels at all. And I'm using my Sennheiser 416 boom mic, which is the mic I'd like to use for most of the time. I think you'd agree. It sounds pretty bad. Way too much echo. Yeah, I know, it took me ages, but that's because I'm cack-handed. Still, I got four of the eight panels I purchased up on that ceiling, and I'm really pleased. It already sounds better to my ears. What do you think? A lot less lively, and already a lot of the echo is gone. I'll put the other four on the slopey ceiling behind me. I've also got a rug on the hard floor, which makes a difference, but I think this sounds great. Good job. I'm pleased with those. The next thing I need is a proper desk to anchor my position. I should explain, almost a year ago a company called Flexispot got in touch and offered to send me one of their standing desks to review on video. I of course said no thank you because I didn't see the relevance to reviewing camera kit or making YouTube videos. I was of course completely wrong and they took it very well and sent me one anyway. 
And I should be very clear, I haven't paid for this desk. Flexispot offered to send it to me to review. But they're not sponsoring this video. They don't get to see it first and I can say whatever I like. So I will. And the first thing I notice is the parts that make up the base are much sturdier, I mean heavier, than I thought they were going to be. The top I've got here is in maple and it's 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters, which is a good size for this room. But if you need larger, they do sell larger tops. three screws left over. Always a bit of a worry. Probably just spares. On the whole though, I really like this. It's solid. Works really well and I think it looks the part. It took me less than one hour to build it on my own. I'd recommend, especially with the larger sizes, that you get two of you if you need to turn it over or when you're building it, just an extra pair of hands would help. But I did it on my own and the only issue I had was there were a couple of holes missing underneath where you need to screw in the mains unit. But it's easily solved, two seconds with a Dremel and I did my own holes. Um, and I think it went together really well. Of course, the party trick is it goes up and down and it tells you the height in centimeters. It's really accurate straight out of the box. This EZ1 model has a single motor with four memory positions. It'll travel at about two and a half centimeters a second and carry 70 kilograms all the way from 71 centimeters up to 121. That's plenty. One thing I am looking forward to is being able to demonstrate and look at kit while being stood up. That's revolutionary. And in many ways, it's easier to raise the desk than it is to lower all your tripods. I really like this standing desk from Flexispot. And I know what you're thinking. He would say that it hasn't cost him anything. But actually, if I didn't like it or I didn't like something about it, why wouldn't I tell you? In actual fact, I think it's a really welcome addition to my new little studio space. And it's flexible. Does the job really well. Solid. Very happy. In part two of this tiny little series, I'm going to look at making a C-stand on wheels that carries the camera, the key light, audio, and possibly a monitor as well. Something that I can move around and change the background quickly and easily because I think flexibility is the key here. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>